Kim Yost is the CEO of Art Van Furniture, a, a top family-owned furniture company, one of the top 15 in the entire United States and certainly the largest in this state. And the Art Van Furniture Company is, is unique and important to us at Northwood in another unique way in that 1959, long before any of you students were probably even thought about, um, uh, it was a great entrepreneurial year in the state of Michigan. And there were five businesses that got started that year. Art Van Furniture, the Amway Corporation, Little Caesars Pizza, Motown, and Northwood University. And all of those five continue uh, to survive and prosper to this day. Um, three of the five have sent their children and grandchildren to this university and are graduates of this university. Um, so we continue to have very close relationship with those businesses. And we're very pleased to have Kim here this evening as the CEO. He's done extraordinary things for this family business. He came in the fall of 2009 and has grown the company substantially, opening many new uh, Art Van stores and Art Van Pure Sleep stores. They've set all-time sales records for mattress sales, for single-day store sales, record sales on certain days of the year, like the day after Christmas or New Year's Day or Fourth of July, all kinds of sales records uh, during his tenure here at Art Van. Prior to that, for 13 years, he was affiliated with The Brick, which is the largest furniture and uh, appliance and electronic goods store in Canada. And he has over 30 years experience in business in his home country of Canada before coming to the United States. He took The Brick from about 900 million a year in sales to about 1.7 billion a year in just six years uh, under his leadership. So he's a proven leader of large organizations. And we are so fortunate to have both Kim and Donna here with us this evening as part of our Values Emphasis Week. So please join me in welcoming Kim Yost, our 2016 Outstanding Business Leader. Thank you, Dr. Pretty. Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. OK, we're getting started. You know, there'll be a sales meeting on Saturday morning for each of you if you don't. So let's get started. The theme for today and tonight is rise. And I've got an interesting video that we're going to play for rise. Oh, yeah, we'll see if this one works. So that video was created for a campaign that we launched with our mattress division. And it was an idea and a thought that came from one realization and one realization in itself, and that was how you rise determines how successful you are in the given day, in your given career, and ultimately in your given life. That first hour, which I'm going to be speaking about in a few minutes, makes all the difference. And so the theme is rise. Three parts to today's presentation. We're going to warm you up, get you going, get you thinking. And then I've got a message which hopefully will change your lives. It's got three parts. We're going to talk about building your personal brand and the importance of that brand. We're going to talk about your transformation from today that you can do today. 
And then lastly, we're going to talk about being open for learning. And I think you'll enjoy that section immensely. And then, it wouldn't be a great art band sales meeting if I didn't get a commitment, and so we're going to get engaged, and I've got a couple slides to close it off. And by that time, you'll be totally committed to rising each and every day from this point on. Now, before we get started, let me ask you a few questions. What would we be expected to get out of tonight? We're going to spend the next 35, 40 minutes together. Oh, yes. And it's going to be exciting. It's going to be engaging. But that's for me. What about for you? So here's a question. What would we expect to get out of the next 35 minutes? Can anybody start? What would you like for me to talk about? What would you like to be seen up on the slides that you could take away something from? Any ideas and thoughts? What are we looking for? Don't everybody speak at once. Okay, this is not television. I can see all of you, okay? Yes, you can go home and sit in front of TV, you can pass out, you can drool, you can nod off, but it's not television, I can see all of you. Okay, any questions, comments, as yes sir? Uh, your experience uh, running a big business. Okay, my experience is running a big business. All right, what's the first name? Nick. Nick, okay, Nick, we'll address that. Thank you, sir. Any others? Uh, and who did that come from? Okay, yes, motivation. You'd like to see something motivational, inspirational? Good, well, we can bring Donna back up for that. <laughs> okay, great, we can address that. Okay, any other? One last, yes, sir. Uh, how about your startup, your business? Okay, first name? William. William, all right. Start up, William, we can address that. Okay, well, the purpose for that is to remind you of one thing. And it is a reality. It's a brutal reality. Speakers, seminars, people come, they listen, they get excited. In some cases, they'll stand up and say, oh my god, I think it's amazing. I love that speaker. Yeah, he's terrific. They may even leave that night thinking, I'm going to introduce some of those changes in my life. I'm going to adopt some of those concepts. Yes. I'm going to be amazing starting tomorrow. But here's the brutal reality. 95% of people who read books, go to seminars, listen to irritating speakers like myself, do nothing about what they've learned. And that's not for us. We're that 5% that will take something out of tonight's presentation, and if we just do one thing, one thing, this will be amazing. We're not going to be a statistic. We're going to learn from people's passion and the law of diminishing return. And we're going to find that one thing tonight that's going to change our lives. That one thing that we can take from tonight and put inside our philosophies, inside our behaviors, inside of our change and our transformation, and open up a new opportunity that we never saw before. So what is the one thing we're going to take away? You can be deciding on that as we go forward. And what I'm going to suggest to you is that everything that I speak about for the next few minutes, you can start today. Yes. We call it the stroke of the pen. You don't need financial wealth. You don't need a sponsor. You don't need an investor. You can do it today. Do it for yourself. And you'll take it away and make a difference. So if we find one thing, through the balance of today's presentation, when will we be able to act on it? Today. Okay, all right, it's gonna be a long night. Okay, we're gonna try that one more time. If we find something we like, if there's some brilliance, just a little nugget of something that resonates with each and every one of us, when can we do it? Today. God bless you, okay, now we can get started. Pumptitude, my third book, I Pump. What did we try to accomplish in the third book? Internal pumptitude. What is it about these individuals, these one percenters, who wake up every morning with their own battery pack charged up? What's to learn from these one percenters who make a difference, not only once, but multiple times throughout their career? What is there to learn? And here's what my wife wrote for me, because she's a far better writer than I am, and I want to just read it to you, because it's in the third book of the trilogy, I Pump, and it says it all. As Simon Sinek has written a book called Start With Why, this is my why. 
This is what is all about what we do and what I do. And when I walk you through it, see if anything resonates. Internal promptitude, I pump. The discovery that you have a gift. A determination to make the most of that gift. An altitude of attitude that is multiplied by the fire within. An inner courage that makes you unstoppable. Love that word, unstoppable. A passion for the grind. And we're going to talk about that passion for the grind because, ladies and gentlemen, it is a grind. Heightened productivity, irrespective of circumstances, and a plethora of possibilities. Contagious motivation that inspires others, and more importantly, a relentless movement to greatness that feeds on itself and guarantees a great life. Do you know that today, three out of every four individuals have lost their mojo? Oh yeah, they've lost it. They have lost their drive, their ambition, their spirit. You could say their vision and arguably their mission. Why is that? Why is three out of four people walking through life like autopilot, cruise control? This is not for us. And so the purpose for today's presentation and our warm up is what can we learn about these one percenters? What can we learn about these individuals that set a course and achieve amazing things in their life and have absolutely no regret? What is it about these individuals, that these secrets that we can share? Let me tell you one, and that is pain. Your success is predicated on your ability to go beyond that little pain, beyond that discomfort, continue to work on yourself, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, and you have my personal guarantee that you can become and achieve anything that you put your mind to. Have you heard this one? If you believe you will be successful, or you believe you will not be successful, you're right on both accounts. So what do we believe? We believe in those things that we can do. Okay, we're going to start that one. We believe in those things we can do too. Today, today yes, because today is the first day of the rest of your life. I'll tell you a little story from Mr. Van, our chairman, founder, 57 years in business. We are just knocking on the door of being a billion dollar company. A billion dollars in revenue, starting from humble beginnings, one store, 800 square feet. His daughter was graduating, and she said, Dad, I can't wait to finish this school, get out of these exams and lectures and irritating speakers like Kim Yost. I gotta get out of this, and I can't wait to start life. And this is what our chairman, Mr. Van, reminded his daughter. Honey, the tests have just started. The examinations are just starting. Your results are just starting. Life is all about testing yourself, doing the distance, and getting the grades. So you have my personal guarantee, my personal guarantee, that if you adopt today the idea that you are the CEO and the president of each and every one of your lives, if you find one nugget through the balance of the presentation, if you find one thing that resonates and you do it, yeah. amazing things will happen. A few little secrets which I'm going to pass on before we go into the message. You must have a vision. You've got to set goals, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. You must work harder and have a passion on everything you do, you must stay focused, and then finally, you must be relentless in your achieving of those goals. Yes, relentless. When I was writing my first book, Pumptitude, I yelled out to Donna one Sunday morning, I said, Donna, what's that one word that describes your husband that stands above any other words? I'm working on a chapter of the power of the one word, which we'll get to in a few minutes, the power of the one word, what's that one word? I thought she'd say, humorous. Oh, yeah. Oh, my life. Humorous. Nope. Kind. Thoughtful. Endearing. Here's what I got. Relentless. That was my one word. And it became a chapter in Pumptitude. Relentless. 
Failing to plan is the same as planning to fail. And here's what I'd like to share with you. Today, because we're going to do it today, we're going to start designing the architectural framework of an amazing life. Yes, an amazing life. A life that is unprecedented. A life that is unique to your own. And you're going to start it today. Yes. And here's what I want to share with you. If you fail to plan on that life, if you fail to plan on what you want to become, if you fail to plan on what that future will look like, it's like planning to fail. So it's all about planning. And here's an interesting one that I'll tell you. You want to develop a set of world-class skills that each and every one of you can be proud of. World-class skills that each and every one of you can be incredibly proud of. Far better to pick a few skills and be amazing at those than be a master of many and fall into the mediocrity. This is not for us. So later I'm going to talk about secret sauce and what will separate you and will make you that unique individual. Say yes you can starts the first slide of our message. And what's so interesting about this slide is that it all starts here. At Northwood, we create winners. At Northwood, we set the guiding system. Yes, you're all like rockets, like missiles, headed to a destination. This is the guidance system. It's what you put in this that determines the destination of that rocket and missile. All starts here. If it doesn't start in your inner mind, it's not going to happen in your outer world. All starts here. You can overcome any odds. It is your choice for success. And you want to major in the majors. You don't want to major in the minors. And here's the one word that I'd like to plant that you can take on Today, yes! And the one word is more. More. So what I challenge each and every one of you tonight is to take this one word more, not more from the abundance of it all, not more from the idea of more is good. No, listen to these. These are powerful. These are unleashing. Learn more. See more. Share more experience more, grow more, imagine more, and then lastly, when you do all those things and you embrace this word more, you know what happens? You become more. Yes. And why do I want you to embrace these words? Why do I want you to think of the word more? Not necessarily because of the end result, it's what you become with what your vision is. It's become what you realize and succeed when you look for more, more in everything about your life. Three secrets of success passed down through the ages. Now what I'm about to share with you is infamous. Oh yeah, infamous. And normally an audience of this size, I threaten you for secrecy because we're going to keep these secrets to ourselves. And if you don't, I have to kill all of you. Oh yeah, one at a time, I kind of search you out. And so we're not going to share the secrets that I'm about to give you. They've been passed down through the ages. They're infamous. And here one starts. Build your brand. Ladies and gentlemen, each and every one of you here today, no matter where you are in your life cycle, whether you're in the process of graduating and developing your education, or you yourself are an educator, you are a brand. We go through our lives admiring brands. What is it about brands that we love? What is it about brands that we admire? What is it about Nike, great brand? What is it about thousands of brands that have spent a lifetime, time, money, and effort building that we will spend money, we will spend effort, we become an advocate for that brand, we vote with our feet, because people do vote with their feet, we walk towards that brand. Today, I want you to realize that each and every one of you is your own personal brand. This is the start. Think of yourself as a brand. Secondly, the power of transformation. This one 
is amazing. Yes. Did I tell you it was amazing? Yes. What was your first name? Katie. Katie, get ready for amazing. Okay. Are you ready, Katie? Yes. Okay. Here it is. I want you to imagine a hypothetical student, a hypothetical individual who wants your career, wants your job, and will aspire far greater in life than you will. I want you to imagine this interview that you're going to be going to. And there's a colleague, a competitor, right beside you. And they want that same job. Now, I want you to imagine this hypothetical competitor, this hypothetical one percenter, this keener, and I want you to think about what they look like. How committed are they? How passionate are they? Do they have a focus? Are they prepared? Maybe they're prepared far greater than the interview than you. I want you to understand all the behaviors of this hypothetical individual who is an absolute star and will achieve well beyond what you believe they will and what you may be yourself. And by this time, you're a little threatened. But here's the magic and here's the power of what I want to share with you. Once you have imagined that competitor, once you have imagined this successful one percenter, you know what you do? You transform yourself into that person. And this is what I have done successfully with businesses, with my own personal career. I fear competitors. I design them. I develop them. They're hypothetical. I worry about them. I lose sleep over them. And then you know what I do with an entire team? Is we transform ourselves to the very business that we are concerned about. We transform ourselves to the very business that can compete with us far more successfully than we compete every day. And you can apply that same principle to yourself. Imagine sports, hypothetical, top performers, people who compete at an incredibly high level. What do you do? You're not feared of them. You transform yourself into them. Yes, it's a hypothetical situation, but it can make a huge difference. A huge difference. Open for learning. I'm in my early 20s and I made a buyer. Oh yeah, for a big furniture company in Canada, Vancouver, British Columbia, and I made a buyer. I got my purchase orders, I got my little briefcase, and I'm set and I'm going to China. Now nobody speaks a word, English, in any of the factories that I'm going to visit. And I got my best lesson in terms of communication, connecting, and here it is. They gave us body language. Yeah, I'm 23 years old and I'm going to a school about body language on how to sell or rather purchase from a number of countries, from a number of business owners all throughout Asia and none of them speak English. So this was a good one. Partnership. You mumble along a few words and you go, partnership, yes, partnership. This was another good one. Good deal, yeah, good deal. Everybody understood that one. And this is the one that I enjoyed the most. When their prices were too high, we gave them this. Yeah, that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. But here's the one. We gave them this when the prices were too high. This is the one that was so more powerful in my career, and that was being open for learning. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. But this one, when you're trying to sell somebody a new idea, when you're trying to share a new concept with someone, when you've got an idea that nobody believes in, you want them to be open for learning. Oh yeah, and you're going to meet students, you're going to meet a lot of people in your life that are going to walk up to you and say, oh yeah, I'm open for learning, I'm open for new ideas, I'm prepared for you to impress me, for you to take me to a place I've never been before, and you can be guaranteed that their palms are facing down. And whenever you find yourself in that situation, you may even use it tomorrow, because when can you start some of these skills, Katie? Is it Katie? Yeah. Today, yes! And so when you're trying to sell somebody an idea, or you're trying to sell your educators new grades, which I used to do all the time, I'd say, you're not open for learning. I want a better grade. Come on. Oh, yeah. Open for learning. Learning. Life learning. Very powerful. Number one, build your personal brand. Number two, the power of transformation. Every one of us can see today that today is the first day of the rest of our lives. We are limitless. We are unstoppable once we make up our mind. And then lastly, open for learning. We love this quote. We love this quote. Jim Rohn, God bless his soul. This is powerful. Make sure I get it right. 
Work at your job and make a living. Work on yourself and you make a fortune. This is the power of tonight's presentation. This is the secret to unlock unstoppable success. This is the secret. Ladies and gentlemen, if you work at a job, you will make a living. And particularly coming out of this great university, you'll make a fine living. But if you work on yourself, if you decide to, day, today, today, to take on CEO and the president of your own life, of your own career, of your own future, it will lock unfortunate, unbelievable. And so what do we learn? Work on your job, make a living, work on yourself, make a fortune. Vision, mission, I want to just comment on a couple things on this slide. Each and every one of you here tonight are a single SKU, stock keeping unit. Your DNA has been set. There's only one of you. Don't try to be anybody else because they're already taken. Oh yeah, some people say, oh, I like that person, I want to be that person, or I like that. No, they're already taken. You've got to look at yourself, and you are who you are. It's your individual DNA. And there's seven billion of us. Seven billion. And so what I encourage you on this slide, as you develop your vision and your mission, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, what is your secret sauce? What is that special part of you that differentiates that separates you from anybody else on this planet. Yes, you are unique. And once you start setting your mind to understanding what your secret sauce is, what makes you so special, what makes you relentless, you're on your way. Here's a couple words that I throw in. More, grow, rise, when we start selecting those single words. And here's the ones that I want to have you embrace Throughout this slide presentation, there are little nuggets. Little nuggets that have been passed down through the ages of which you, if you adopt, can unleash this unprecedented success. And here's another amazing nugget. Three words. If you adopt these in your DNA, if you adopt these in your behavior, if you adopt these in your philosophies of life, I repeat, your philosophies of life, limitless, smart, academically, you're going to get that here hungry, that burning desire for success, that relentless quest for your goals, that winning unstoppable, that hunger, and then lastly, the most powerful of the three, humility. Oh yes, I interview, I have hired, I have mentored, many combinations of two. They're smart and they're hungry, but they're not so humble. They're humble, they're hungry, but they're not so smart. Any of the three combinations together, lethal. Smart, hungry, and humble. And don't forget that humility, because as great as you're going to be, as unstoppable as each and every one of you are going to be, don't forget to be thankful, to be appreciative, to be empathetic, be humble. Okay, another big nugget coming. Katie, are you ready? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Suzanne Hewitt, three powerful learnings for each and every one of you, because you can start to today. today. How you look, how you act, and how you speak. How you look, your personal brand. Are you ready? Are you ready to play full out? Are you your best you can be every and each and day? How you look. Yes, get over that comment about superficiality where people make a judgment from when they meet you and they look at you, get over it, they do it. They make a judgment of you within seconds. It takes months for them to get to learn who you really are, and none of us have that time most of the time. How you look, I love this one. How you act, how you perform, how you present yourself, and then lastly, how you speak. The power of connecting. Do you know that everybody communicates but only a select few work on their connecting skills, their communication skills. Yes, they move people because they say less and mean more. Powerful book, recommend you reading it. Do you know that you will become the average of five people that you most spend time with? 
This is a fact. Five people, most time, you will become their average. So what we encourage you tonight is hang out with winners. Hang out with people who challenge you. Hang out with people who take you out of your comfort zone. Hang out with people who are on a path to success. Don't hang out with the wieners. Oh, did I say wieners? No, winners. No, wieners. You don't want to hang out with the wieners, the losers. No, this is not for us. You don't want to hang out with the energy vampires, the grumptitudes, the pumptitude people. You want to hang out with people who will challenge you and take your personal best to another level. Huge. How you look, how you act, and how you speak. We talked earlier about transformation. I just want to talk a little bit about attitude determines altitude. And here's a good one. I love this one. My CEO coach, Mike Lipkin, irritates me all the time. I'll talk about irritation in a minute. And here's what he told me. He says, Yost, Yost, stop thinking to yourself. Because every time you think when you're driving home from work or you've got time to think, he says, it's always negative. We always think to ourselves negatively. We don't bolster ourselves up. Stop thinking to yourself. And you know what he wanted me to replace it with? Start talking to yourself. Oh yeah, talk is far better than thinking. And here's what he wants me to tell each and every one of you. As you start talking to yourself, give yourself positive mental affirmations. And so you stand in front of the mirror and you say to yourself, I like myself. Oh yeah, I like myself. I'm amazing. I'm amazing. I'm unstoppable. I'm courageous. I'm whatever I set my mind to be. And I'm a winner. Stop thinking to yourself. It's usually <laughs> pessimism. It's usually negative. It's frustrating. So as you're driving home or you're going about your business and you start thinking to yourself, replace that with self-talk and keep telling yourself how friggin' amazing you are because you are. Do you know that People come to me all the time and they say, Yos, 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 Yos. How come you're so fired up and you're so passionate about what you do? You're always so on, on it. Everything's just so great. I said, well, it's pretty simple. I read my own books and I attend all of my own speeches. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about habits. Successful people do those things that non-successful people do don't have any interest of doing it. Do you know what makes us one percenters? Is because we are prepared to do those things that the other 99% are not interested in doing. That's what makes us one percenters. And it's those habits inside us one percenters that take us to the top. It's all about successful habits. Brian Tracy wrote this forward for the first book. Dear friend of mine, I've known him for over four decades. He's published 54 books spoken almost on every continent, amazing inspiration, education, mentor, you name it, Brian Tracy. And he will tell you that it's your habits that make a big difference. He's big into habits. And I'm about to share with you my top five habits. My top five habits. Number one, energy. Ladies and gentlemen, you saw that Rise commercial. How you rise is how you succeed. How you rise is how you make the difference in that day, that week, that month, and in your career. It's all about energy. Do you know that you will be as equally successful as how you feel? If you feel lousy, you won't be successful. Energy, success, all tied together. And so I created the 23-hour day. My first habit is for over 40 years, I get up first thing in the morning, seven days a week, typically at 5 a.m., and I put in one hour of road work running, uh, gym work, weights, you name it, every day. I call it the power hour, the power up hour, 23 hour day. And you know what happens when you start that day with that first hour? Do you know what happens? You benefit for the remaining 23 hours. The ROI, return on investment, the ROE, return on energy, the ROS, return on success, it's all there for you. Ladies and gentlemen, how many of us are mathematicians? If I gave you, how about we say this? If you gave me a dollar and I gave you $23 back, would that be good ROI, return on investment? If you give me this guarantee tonight, oh yeah, I'm jumping ahead from the structure, get a commitment. If you give me this guarantee tonight that you will just try it once, 
Just try it once. Get up in the morning, get out of your dorm, apartment, residence, and get out there and spend 60 minutes, one morning, maybe two mornings, and see what happens when you get a little circulation, when you get a little fitness, a little bit of activity. The remaining 23 hours will be effortless, they will be phenomenal and amazing. How many of us here tonight get up in the morning and give a little bit of that oxygen, exercise, circulation every morning? How many of us participate in the power up hour? Any of us? Okay, this is a great audience, yes. And so I'm gonna ask you tomorrow morning, find some opportunity and if you can't run, walk. And if you can't walk, do you know that I've had some speaking groups? I say, go out in the front yard, fall on the ground, and just wriggle for an hour. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, the neighbors are going to think you're weird, and you may get some emergency people coming to save you, but it'll be fun. Power hour. Energy. Here's a good one. It's a fact. People who sit the longest die the earliest. Ladies and gentlemen, starting today, a chair is not your friend. Now, you like sofas. We love sofas. And we love mattresses. But a chair is not your friend. Okay. Are you ready? It's right here. I've got to move quickly. It's right here. Get ready for it. Five daily to-dos. Started businesses. Succeeded in business. Reinvented myself. Changed my lives around me all with my five daily to-dos. You take a simple menu card and you write down every morning five things that you want to accomplish that day. Five. And if you don't get them that day, you put them on the next day's menu card and you just move them forward. This card has been my greatest single-minded laser focus, keep me on track, get me doing things, results-oriented tool. Five daily to-dos. If you just get up in the morning, Grab a simple little menu card, write down the five things that you want to accomplish that day that you're going to make a difference. They could be your to-do list. They could be goal setting issues. They could be things that you're working on. Write them down every day. Get them into your uh, guided system and you'd be amazing on what they do. It's absolutely amazing. My five daily to-dos. And you know that I sometimes cheat a little bit. Yeah, I'm so damn successful and so excited about what's going on. You know what I do? I add six, seven, eight, and then look at this one. I think I ran out of paper. Because you know when you're on fire, you know when you've hit your sweet spot, we know when you're in your passion zone, when there's not enough room on your five daily reminder card to get everything done that you want. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, five daily to-dos. Schmunday, I created an eighth day. Yeah, there wasn't enough in seven days to put everything in, so I had to create an eighth day. Started years ago, Sunday night, 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. The Lord gave us the first seven, and I just asked him if he could give him some creativity, imagination, where I could just kind of cram a little extra, and he says, oh, take Sunday night, quiet time for yourself. Now, I start at 5 p.m., and I go right through to 10, religiously, week after week. Here's what I want to challenge each and every one of you. You can do it today. Take one hour. Start your Monday tomorrow. Find within your seven-day rhythm one hour of your time. One hour that you divorce yourself from the world, you sit down in one place, hopefully on a regular basis, and you think about where you're going. What are you doing? What you can put into your shmundi is reading, strategizing, envisioning, but it's the importance of the repetition. It's the importance of doing it week after week. Find your shmundi, and you'd be amazed as to what happens. And here's what I want to tell each and every one of you. As you embark in your careers and you find a job, it picks up your first one, and you're not fired up and you're not passionate about that job and you're not contributing your schmunday to the success of that job, don't continue. Look for your resume. Because part of the presentation today is all about passion, all about finding your passion sweet spot and what will make you a huge success. Does this make sense? Growing or dying, there is no static in life. Powerful. Now, normally what I do is I take a book and I share it with the audience and I say you are either going forward and you are growing, and if you're competitive, you're eating somebody else's lunch, 
or you are going backwards, you are dying, and somebody else is eating your lunch. Ladies and gentlemen, here's a stark reality. There is no static. In health, in wealth, in attitude, in success, you can't stay the same 10 minutes from now. You're either moving forward or you're going backwards. And when you realize that there's no static, when you realize you can't be on cruise control or autopilot, move forward. And the second one I want to share with you is this power that I learned from Tony Robbins, the power of Kanai, constant and never-ending improvement. So if there's no static, we're either growing or we're dying. We're either winning or we're losing. We're either succeeding or we're failing. If there's no static, here's a powerful learning for each and every one of us. Adopt Kanai, constant and never-ending improvement. And you don't have to improve yards. You don't have to improve miles. You can just improve inches on everything you do from today. And you can start it today. Look to improve everything that comes across you, every little thing, no matter whether it's your personal brand, how you look, how you act, or how you speak, whether it's your performance in the classroom or your performance on the field, look to Kanai, constant and never-ending improvement. And when you're not canying, you're going to get a teacher, you're going to get a mentor, you're going to get a speaker who's going to irritate the heck out of you. And here's what I want to teach you. Ladies and gentlemen, we learn more from the people who irritate us than the ones who don't. We learn more from the people who irritate us than the ones that don't. They challenge us, they take us to a place we've never been before, they make us better. But through the process, they irritate the heck out of us. And you want to know what? Most of the people that are irritating you, they love you. Yes. Because you know what happens? We only irritate, we only spend time, we only challenge the people we care about. So when your teachers are irritating you, right? And as Dr. Priest said, the next few weeks are so important and you're finishing off your semester, guess what? There's going to be lots of irritation. They love you. Yeah. And as they're irritating you, remind it, they're doing it for your own good. We learn more from the people who irritate us than the people who don't. Beginner's mind, look for everything that comes across your future with possibility. The beginner's mind, you can get onto about why children are so terrific in learning things, is because they see things through the beginner's mind. So this is the last slide of the message. Personal brand, all of us are brands. The commitment in understanding what we are gonna become as a brand, very key. Let's go to the close. Oh yeah, Katie, when can we do it? God bless you. Okay, it's not gonna be easy. It's not gonna be easy. I'm being very honest with you. For many of you in this classroom, it's going to be lonely. You're gonna be up late, you're gonna be by yourself, studying, working, putting all those efforts in, but all I can tell you is it'll be your sweat, your drive, your passion, your sacrifice, and ultimately your difference that will make the success. You are the CEO and the president of your own life. And as we embark on this first day of the rest of our life, I want to share one additional point of view, a philosophy, a very powerful philosophy. I want you to be happy with what you've got while you're in pursuit of what you want. Why is it so powerful? Because you can meet miserable people. You can meet gruntitude. You can meet people who are never happy, never satisfied. They're perfectionists. You tend to dwell on things because nothing is the way they want it. This is not for us. We are happy with what we've got today while we're in pursuit of what we want. Very powerful learning. It's the genius of the and, not the tyranny of the or. Okay, CEO secret checklist. Number one, vision. Know where you're going. Understand where you're taking your life, where you're taking your career. Have a vision and write it down. Number two, your personal brand. We've talked about it. Each and every one of you here today is a brand. Are people going to vote walking towards you? Or are they going to vote walking away from you? How much time and effort are you going to invest in your personal brand? And then goal setting. Here's an interesting one. 
It'll shake you up a bit. It'll give you something to think about. I'm challenging each and every one of you to become millionaires as quickly as you can. Oh yeah. People say, a millionaire? I like that goal. I like that Yost guy. He said, write my goal down in being a millionaire. But here's the value of it. The value is not the million dollars in your checking account. The value is not the fact that you can say that you've joined an elite group of millionaires. No. The real value is what you become. Becoming a millionaire. What it takes. The vision. The mission. The effort. The focus. The relentless pursuit. It's what you become. Becoming a millionaire. That is so important. Isn't that interesting? It's what we become at Northwood University. It's what we become through our quest for success. It's what we become. And that's the true value. We've talked about habits. We've talked about focus. Passion for the grind. Katie, we're going to write a book about ourselves. Oh, yeah. I've published a few books on my own, and they're very revealing. We're going to publish a book. Ladies and gentlemen, every one of you are going to become authors starting tomorrow. And it is the first day of the rest of your life in your book. Now, will somebody read your book? Will somebody be interested in what you have become? Will somebody be interested in what you write? Will your book be an adventure? Will it be a comedy? Will it be a thriller? Will it be a horror story? You are the stars. You are the author of your own book. And tomorrow, you can start with that first chapter. My CEO coach, Mike Lipkin, says, play full out when it counts. Play full out when it counts. Hold nothing back when it counts. So as you move on to taking one thing away from tonight, or even more, play full out. Hold nothing back when it counts. And here's an interesting one. Imagine if I never adopted that. And Dr. Purdy introduced me and says, well, it's the CEO of Art Man Furniture, Kim Yost. You know, he speaks around and has had some successes. But we don't know if he's going to be on fire tonight or not. We, well, hopefully we can get a good one. No, tonight it counted for me. I had to bring it all. I had to pack into these slides the best I've got, the secrets of success, the secrets to making each and every one of you an inspirational life that is unique to each and every one of you. I had to pack in the best. So I had to play full out. I held nothing back. And lastly, when you do that, <laughs> when you hold nothing back, when you play full out, when you bring it all, when it counts, you can go to the moon, ladies and gentlemen. You can set a course well beyond your imagination. And the last and final slide says, we can go to places we have never been before. And I have to tell you, I have irritated a lot of people in my life. And I have taken them to places they never imagined being. And they complained. And they were stressed out. And they gave me a lot of grief. But when they get there, they never want to go back. And they believe it's the best journey. Thank you very much.